morning. My name is Roy Tinker from Landscape Department. Uh, snow looks like we've been handling pretty good. And uh, we're working on the master plan for the year coming. And we're meeting with contractors on this coming Thursday at the landscape meeting. So we should have a contract there in place, hopefully, real soon. Okay. And everything else looks pretty good on the apartment. We just had a lot of ruts and a lot of repairs that will need to be done as the weather changes as the spring come forward. Hopefully so. Okay. So my understanding is that we're expecting uh, snow for Friday. I mean Thursday, I'm sorry. Wednesday night Friday. Yeah, Wednesday Thursday, night. Wednesday, so Wednesday. Uh, my, my understanding is it's supposed to be fairly heavy uh, at this point. They, depends on who you, who you listen to, they, they've been going back and forth with that. They haven't even been definite. It's like a nor'easter. We could miss it totally or we could get covered totally. So we'll pray that it goes out to the, uh, to the ocean like the last one. Yeah, All right, Dave, I guess the next question is from the, um, the contract standpoint. There's some contract stuff that wasn't worked out from um, last week. And I'm not going to sign the invoice until we have that worked out. Um, there's another, so what are we going to do this week? Who, do we know who we're using? Do we have a basic budget that says pounds per saw, et cetera? Right. Currently we have one company that's doing it temporarily for us. Okay. Um, and we've also secured two more bids through Jeff from Landscaping that we're going to be looking at this week that we can use uh, on a permanent basis. But we still need to go through as far as pricing and make sure they're in line with our pricing. Um, uh, in addition to that, we're also, uh, on the 12th, we're supposed to receive our six um, uh, pallets of ice melt, which will put us back in line with what we keep in stock. Okay. Um, so, I mean, we're, we're, we are ready to go, but like I said, the only one thing we're doing now is going through with our bidding process. So, so again, I'm not adverse to the company we had. I'm adverse to not seeing a dedicated invoice. And that invoice should be broken down by man, by hours, by equipment, by operational material. And I didn't see it that way. So, gotcha. you know, if Mr. Roy felt that they did a good job in Jeff, I, I can go either way, but I want to make sure that it comes in. Correct. Correct. Yeah, we're, we'll have that before Wednesday. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, it, it came in kind of, kind of. Uh, uh, it, it was, was a one-line item, yeah, and that was it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, so. All right, so we'll walk me through real quick. Um, we got the corridors. We got a lot of phone calls last time about the corridors. So we got an operational issue that's on both sides. It's from the residents want to make sure that they don't slip and fall, obviously, and we don't want them to slip and fall when they're coming to dinner or whatever. Um, but then we had a second problem. Mr. Dwindle comes in my office all the time and says, what are you doing to me? Because there's just massive amounts of salt internally, and not to mention marketing. So, um, what we got to kind of sit down and try to figure out how we want to do that because if the, if the contractor, if we need contractual help to go through the sidewalks area, then you have to come tell us because I'm not sure that we don't need that help right. at this point. So if that's something that we need to look at, then let me know. We also have to look at the option of are we strategically throwing this off or are we just throwing this off? And that's a question in a certain way I guess I'm looking for you to kind of lead me in the right direction. Well, we kind of like, uh, we didn't have the spreader set proper, and, and Jeff and I talked about setting them. Okay. We put them together, we left them wide open, so when people put the salt in, they walk walking, it was way too much. Okay. So we set it back to maybe a quarter, Okay. which it should be set, so we would put as much salt down in the <laughs> covered areas. Okay. And Dave, we did buy new machines, too, because I don't think mm -hmm. we got that out to the residents, so you might want to explain that a little bit. Yeah, we did buy new spreaders and refresh the stock that we already had. And we also have a, a spreader on order through Sun Ventures, which we'll actually put on the back of one of our newer trucks. And we'll be able to, to do some of that stuff that we would normally contract out. We'll be able to do that in-house. So we'll be able to save on that side of things, too. The location is a question over the issues are. We know who was assigned to that task. So maybe some training involved. I see. Yeah, that would be a good idea. It's possible. Yeah. to Kendall for security and transportation. I know Kendall has some good news. <laughs>
Uh, well, two, we'll, we'll start with uh, security, just an update. Uh, we had some <coughs> exposed wires that uh, operated the gates up at the Lossford Road gate, and uh, with the help of Vernon and David Deal, we, we've had that repaired, so that shouldn't be an issue as far as the lines being cut. Um, and I'm still awaiting a final quote uh, for the remote cameras that will be located behind the 5,000 and 5,100 cluster. The original quote uh, did not include an NVR, which is a remote digital video recorder that will allow us to be able to view video uh, remotely through uh, an Internet uh, access. So I'm still awaiting that quote, which I should have that this week. Um, on the transportation side, uh, on Monday the 17th, uh, we should be taking delivery of two of our new electric vehicles, which are in line with us going green. Um, we will be getting one van for housekeeping, and we'll be getting an electric car that security will be utilizing. And so, I guess that's something that we want to, from a resident standpoint, it's been... I'm sure long desired at this point <laughs> from us to have so the old uh, clunky housekeeping van we're going to move that um, again as Kendall said that the um, it'll be electric vehicles so obviously from it'll save us on gas it'll clearly save us on maintenance and the reason for even doing that was of course sustainability but also we look at the bills like having meetings like this we could see we kept seeing bills for the same uh, cars over and over again, which means we obviously needed to, to make a decision. So um, the decision was to try to go green and obviously save operational um, dollars. So uh, we, like I said, we should get them on Monday. Um, there's been there's been a lot of negotiating with these vehicles. So uh, we've been negotiating these vehicles for about three months now, far too long. Hopefully, I'm not being evaluated on how fast I got these vehicles. So. Um, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so we'll have those two coming in, and then by, I would say, mid to late April, we will have the other two coming in, because they're actually coming in from California. So uh, our plan is to wrap the vehicles with the kind of Colleton logo, so uh, it'll be representative of going around, not just like the vans we have now, they just have a little plate on it. So uh, we'll move forward with that, and we'll probably bring a copy of how it will look to this meeting to make sure we get suggestions. Um, too gaudy, or uh, Kim picks a lot of the colors out. Miss Lake picks a lot of the colors around here, so she'll tell us whether it's a uh, good, bad, or, or indifferent, and we'll and we'll go from there. So, as far as the cameras, I know there's been some some issues here uh, some years ago um, on that backside for the five thousands where there's a, it's all wood. We we've been having a really really tough time trying to find a vendor to come in and be able to basically hook up a wireless camera system. Um, I think we found them finally, I mean, because it's been, we've been through about three or four people um, at this point, and either it was way too expensive or they just couldn't do it. So we think we found somebody, we gave a, we gave a shot to actually our, uh, the vendor that does all of our, um, our locks and things like that because we renegotiated um, their contract and they said, hey, we actually do this. So we're going to give them a shot. I mean, the price came in pretty well. I think it's, it's serviceable with uh, Colleton and the residents will be happy about it. So we're looking at giving them a shot. So there will be more discussions in the, in the next few weeks about that. Mr. Dorman? Okay. I'll, I will overlap Kendall a little bit with security and transportation. But, um, I'm going to start off with um, the uh, environmental services side with the uh, environmental services attendants. Uh, they have been working in an excellent manner Brave in the cold, we are on schedule, on track with our independent living um, housekeeping schedule on the outside as well as the inside in the apartment building. Every, uh, everything is on track. Also, on, in the health center, we are staying on top of our discharges. We are staying on top of the cleaning in the health center. We are staying on top of the personal, uh, personal clothing as well as the laundry in the health center. And uh, the health center is looking good. Uh, and we're moving right along up there. Um, trash and recycle. Just a reminder to uh, everyone who lives in cottages and villas that the trash and recycle days are Tuesdays and Fridays. 
Um, we are moving forward uh, with um, making everything very explicit on what is recyclable and what is not recyclable. We have these um, signs up in our, all of our recycle rooms down in the apartment building, which is very, very explicit and it's very, very large. You know, it's great. It's terrific. It, it, it's unambiguous, which is one of the most important aspects of this whole thing. Great. Yes. The signs is wonderful. Yes. All right, now I have a question. These go up in the apartment building, right? They are. Yeah. How do you know? How how do the people who live in the cottages? We have uh, we have um, um, four recycle um, rooms on the outside, and I'm coordinating now with Mr. Vernon. And there, these will go up there. Yes, but it's going to be a different. It's going to be the same uh, format. format, but it's going to be a it's a it's a metal plate that's going to be placed on the outside of the door. That, that's weather resistant. So if, say I'm a brand new resident and I was wondering where the recycle room is, there's going to be a huge sign on the door oh, great. That's, uh, going to, that's, that's going to be exactly like okay. this. Thank you. And it's, uh, like I said, it's Thank weather, you very much, weather resistant. Please. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. And um, again, I would like to thank everyone uh, for the um, five-star rating that we all received on the caring.com website. According to that website, we were the only assisted living uh, facility slash community that received a five-star rating in the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. We were the only ones. Does marketing know all about that? Yes, ma'am, they do. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. The uh, next thing is, um, we have a quality assurance document that comes out daily. Security produces a quality assurance document daily. And we, when I say we, security and Kendall and I would like to encourage all residents to purchase a Sarah pendant. The amount of um, responses that the security department gets on a daily basis when a resident is in trouble and they press their Sarah pendant. Now, Sarah stands for Situational Awareness Response Assistant. And when it's the, it's the same thing as the Life Alert um, that's off campus. And, and what happens when a resident presses their Sarah pendant, it sends a signal to our security desk, and we, uh, and an officer, security officer, responds to that. And I can't stress how uh, important it is for, uh, I'd like to see each resident, I encourage each resident to, to get one. And last uh, but not least, our transportation drivers have not missed a schedule doing this inclement weather, and they have just been performing outstandingly, getting the residents to and from appointments, to the grocery stores, to anywhere that they need, it, need to go. So we really like to tip our hats off to the transportation drivers driving in these uh, inclement uh, weather conditions. That's all I have. Kendall, <coughs> and that's one. How do new residents learn about Sarah? Oh, how, this is how new, new residents learn about Sarah. Two, uh, two avenues. Now, oh, oh. Uh, one thing I know in conjunction with marketing, they do uh, talk with the new incoming Marketing uh, lets them know yes. this is available. Yes. 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 And when you get, when they come to <coughs> pictures, do you mention it? Well, no, I don't because by that time marketing is already. Uh, Once is not enough. It's not enough. And also. Once is never enough. Remember this. You can say something once and you might as well spit out the window. Okay. okay. Also, I'd like to add right. that during the newcomer's orientation, yes. I give a spill on Sarah. Oh, good. That lasts at least three minutes. I and I, not, not, only do, <laughs> not, not only do we give a spill on Sarah, we give a spill on where all the pool courts are located in their apartment. Good, thank as you. As well as their cottages. All, all, right, right. all right, I got the point. Yes. All right. Okay. That's all. So, Kendall, transportation, we had a conversation with um, nursing a while ago about the ambulatory care. I never heard anything back, so try to tie in um, with Judy and Aaron about that um, this week if you can. Because I never saw anything come back from it. What are they asking? 
Well, we spend, again, we look at budget and a lot of things with budget. So we spend an exorbitant amount of money um, in ambulatory rides, yes. for lack of a better term. Um, we can't go into which company it is. So um, the company that we use, uh, obviously, that is, like I said, it's fairly expensive. So what we were trying to figure out is how many rides could we possibly pick up here if it's in a local area. The problem with us is Kendall can't go but so far out of that area because if the next person is going to run late coming back. Well, and not only that, not to cut you off, but when you say ambulatory, mm -hmm. I mean, we don't have a vehicle in terms of, if it's one thing if they're in a wheelchair, mm -hmm. but if they need stretcher uh, uh, types of vehicles, we, we don't have those. We don't have that capability. Exactly. Mm -hmm. What's churning in my head is the cost-effectiveness of Collington only one of those. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Plus staffing. Yeah, yeah with the issue is not yet. Getting the vehicle is one thing, but paying for the staffing is Yeah, see, getting the, easy, the vehicle is the easy part. Yeah. You can leverage that out over a myriad of years. What do you, you do buy. with the staff? Well, what do you do with the staff? That? Exactly. So that, and the problem that we have right now is we, would, we really want to help. <laughs> But I have to make sure that the staff that's driving that person is certified. Because if mm -hmm. it's not, then I have a, another uh, gotcha. you know, issue on our hands. So um, we're, we're going to look at it. We are going to look at it. If it's something that we can do, we'll try. Um, we're also, when I talked to uh, the nursing unit, I said, look, the option is also renegotiate the contract. If you feel as though it's uh, too expensive, then just sit them down and say, I think it might be too expensive. But can we, you know, can we talk about it? My understanding is this, uh, that vendor has been here for a while at this point. So, yeah. So, uh, so we're working through it. We're working through it. Um, David Deal? Maintenance. Maintenance update? Um, maintenance update. We were um, met with the guys last week to kind of button up on uh, proper procedures as it relates to making sure that you document all your tickets, make sure you have all the correct information. Uh, and going through processes as far as how, how to uh, relay information back to my Vernon and myself as far as ordering is related. Mm -hmm. I think that meeting went very well, um, and, uh, and the guys are starting to get on board with it. Uh, one of the areas of concern uh, still, though, is making sure that all the uh, T's are crossed and the I's are dotted as far as the information getting back, because what we're seeing is some of the residents that call back in and have questions about uh, where we are in relationship to the repair getting made or parts being ordered, that information isn't always readily available to, say, Lula that takes the call or myself or Vernon. So uh, we're still working with the guys on that. We're buttoning up, but we're feeling better about the information. So that's so that's a good thing. As well as educating the employees. For instance, they'll go over there if it's a leak in the seal, and they'll go over there and fix that leak, and we'll never know about patching it. Correct. So we've got we to gotta learn that communication to keep it going. Communication is the key. Uh, Bobby? All right. A good lead into the work orders. Uh, this this time, two weeks ago, we were sitting at about almost 300 work orders out there, but that was due to snow. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are, we've done a pretty good job getting caught up. We're down to 166 currently in process, which is much improved. Uh, over the last two weeks, we did a total of 871 work orders completed. One thing we're going to change or start directing our attention to now is the completion time. Mm -hmm. We definitely want to try to get to all residents within 72 hours, barring, you know, uh, Mother Nature messing that up. If for any reason we do not make it to them by 72 hours, then we need to call the residents and let them know. And that's what we're working on now. Um, in the last two weeks, we had. 328 work orders that we completed on the same day it was called in, which is very good. 51 the next day, 18 took two days, 21 of those took three days. We only had two that took over 10 days, which is less than, it's four tenths of a percent. Dave, you can come up to the screen you want and kind of walk through the report because we're saying it, but kind of show you and we can kind of explain through it. So 
when we initially came, we said my goal was to say, look, any any work order that comes is, is 72 hours. We need to complete it by 72 hours on um, three days, basically. Um, if there is an issue with parts, um, we don't have something here, or it's outside of our purview, then we need to make sure that we notify either through phone call or back through back through the system um, to say, hey, we can't do it. So for a while there, we trying to come up with the report and figure out how to work through it. So this is basically what we got into. So you'll see it by each employee. So if an employee comes in and we'll just uh, use the fourth name down, Dominic Cooper. So 50% of the work orders that he received in that time frame, he completed on the same, the exact same day, and he closed them out. Um, anything, and when we go to the other part is our questions start when we see 4 to 10. So our standpoint is with that is when do we help the uh, employer or have Dominic come back to us and say, hey, what do you have issues on? What can we help you with? Do, is it something that we're missing or is it some supplies that we don't have, et cetera, et cetera. So that's how it, we game plan on what we're doing. So say like this week, if it snows really bad. So if it snows really bad, it drives the work orders behind because now we only have, we have basically 16 individuals doing maintenance. Um, so we'll have basically 16 individuals moving snow. Um, and when I say 16, three of those are including uh, Mr. Dwindle's environmental staff that we, that we use as one team now. So you'll see the, the report can ebb and flow, but it's only going to really much, pretty much ebb and flow probably a lot of times in winter. Because in the summertime, it's, you know, we're not shoveling. You don't have to, you know, shovel if it's 110 degrees outside. So the work order should basically stay in a place where they need to be. But in the wintertime, you, like I said, you'll see ebb and flows. So as you can see, we're able to track uh, each person, each individual person's uh, productivity. Um, most of it, we, we look at it for a positive or where can we help you at. Um, to be honest, it's, it's accountability. So we see something that just really makes no sense. We obviously talk to those talk to those individuals. So um, so yeah, so Bobby, I'm sorry, I to no, make sure we that's, that's all I, have. Now, I have a question. Yes ma'am. Um, if a work order is rejected mm -hmm. for, for some reason, will the uh, will we be notified take for instance I put in a lot of work orders, especially for the new new residents. Um, I need to know if it's been rejected or if, if the resident has been informed that it's been rejected or even if it's being worked on. Um, if there's some delay in a part or something like that, will they be notified? Because I'm getting repeat phone calls or um, repeat requests for the same work order. And I just need to know via email or some type of um, correspondence that it is actually being considered, um, if it's, you know, if, if, if it's even in the queue. Uh, most of the time with a new resident, I'll send out an email because of, uh, we're still working on that unit, maybe some things that we haven't completed. So I don't really put it in a work order queue. Well, I wasn't, but now I am. I'm even sending out a, I'm sending out an email and uh, a work order at the same time. So it's two, two sets of correspondence um, because it's of the utmost importance, especially when they're new on campus, what's going on. Uh, I mean, they have no clue. Um, um, the system is set up, Kim, that once you put in a work order, and I see this a duplicate work order, mm -hmm. if I uh, reject it because of a duplicate, okay. the system, it should respond, it should, it should come back to you. Bob, is that, you see mm -hmm. come back? It should come back. The problem is, if back, you're putting in the so. order for the resident, mm -hmm. right. they're not going to know it was rejected. But, you but, but, but I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not getting you're that. You're not getting so that. Check make sure your email address is correct. That's correct. If she would have put the address in there, would it show all the work orders that it or complete. Right. right, you can always go in and check the status of all your work orders. And that's what I've been doing lately. Um, yeah. yeah, but I've been getting an influx of them, so it's, you know, it's hard for me to... And, and usually I'll tell them, I'll put it in for you this this time. <coughs> that was if I haven't heard anything and within, when two, within two to three days, um, I try to instruct them on how to put the work orders in, and it's just basically called a 2151, you know, mm -hmm. not, not via email. I think about it's a lot to do with what Bob just said. During the st storm, we had over 300 work orders. We had right. the flooding. So some of our work is being backed up. We're starting to play catch up right now. Okay. But the work order system will show you what's open and what's closed. Okay. So let, let me ask this question. For new person comes in, what is the cutoff time? Because what I'm concerned about is we can't say new resident moves in 
we send them immediately to the workforce system. That's not really realistic. So we need to figure out in this room what the cutoff time is. How long is Kim filling the request? I mean, because we know that initially when a person moves in, they're pretty much going to come to Kim. So we're going to say the first 10 days, we're going to be taking those work orders for Kim. Then we need to communicate that because you can't tell the person to move in and jump on work time. That's just right. not happening. And we, and we clearly, we clearly how, see how, how did we handle this? I, yeah. I heard a sort of horror story about a very shy new resident who had an accumulation of, of problems mm -hmm. that she didn't know what to do about them. Mm -hmm. I, you know, she didn't know how to put in a work order. Mm -hmm. To but, an extent, this is a failure on the part of her fellow residents mm -hmm. because somebody who lives close to her should have been in touch and said, mm -hmm. How you got long daisy? Can we help you with anything? Well, how, I, how I've been addressing it, because I have to meet with them on the day of moving, and even um, before then, maybe sometimes it's a week before then, sometimes it's a couple days, but on the day of moving, they should have met with me. I have the new residence hand, handbook, but I'll tell them with, within two, 10 days of them moving in, after they move in, up to 10 days, I will take the request. Well, Bob, let's make sure that we, I guess what I'm trying to make sure is that we are all on the same page. Is that fair to Kim? Is it fair to us? Because it, we have to give them something. I know that we have to give them something. That, let's just be fair about it. Um, the amount of days, because I don't know if we put them in a different bucket when we close them from Kim. I don't know if we create a, a different report for it. But are we agree, Are we in agreement on 10 days, I guess, is my first question. Um, no, I think... She needs about 15 days because of the fact that um, some of the things that they are really asking him to have done, it has to be done by appointments. And sometimes the other, um, the maintenance staff, they already have other appointments already set with other individuals. Sure. So they have to follow through with theirs before they get to the newcomers that come in. And, um, and I think if you was to go ahead and take the request from them before try getting them on the system, mm -hmm. we might be able to track what needs to be done for them better. And them trying to put the work orders in themselves. Yeah. And it, that, that's, um, that's a good time frame for me, 15 days. 15 days. All right, so yeah. we're going to say, so that needs to go out to Ms. we need to make, or Ms. Francis, we need to write that for the uh, right. column terms. Okay. And I think that should go to district leaders also, okay. who would then, if they're doing what they're supposed to do, should tell their cluster and call the leaders. This happens at the marketing committee meeting. I will tell you, fellow residents are extremely undependable. Unless they're part of They're the moving in. Okay. And, and I have found that if the district leader pushes them, surprisingly enough, they might respond. Okay. Who's going to push the district leader? <laughs> I will, I'll talk to you about yeah. how you want this to go later on. Okay. All right, so yeah, because we agree with 15 days, and then after those 15 days, I guess, Bob, and between you and Ken, we need to have some a calendar mapped out. Because Ken needs to be notified, like, and we need to know when that resident moves in, and then we should have it going to everybody's calendar that 15 days is on work hubs. Well, that way, we, Kim shouldn't really have to notify. If she's going to take that part, then she shouldn't have to notify us that it's on us. Now. So what occurs is, Ken, when we get a new resident, Bob gets an email got the phone and so forth. So he don't know that this individual, he should know the individuals and the, and the, the unit number. Yeah, but that individual touches everybody. So, so one of needs to know, Kevin yeah. needs to know, we all know. everybody needs to know 15. Yeah. Yeah. Know, so that's there is an email that goes out. Yeah, we all know from Jerry Mosley, he comes out right. and let us know about the phone and welcoming. And right. exactly. so and so. That's not, but that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is when we go off, when, when it's on us, so the first 15 days, we're saying Kim's going to take everything that needs to go in from a work order and notify us from a new resident. On the 15th, 16th day, we we have to take everything. That resident should be on, that resident I mean, should be on work hub. Should know our numbers, should know Ms. Lola, you know everybody. That, that's, what, that's the part that I'm worried about. I know. We have to get the uh, the phones, the smoke alarms, and all that. I know about that email, but after that 15, we need to be on point. So that's why I'm saying let's just put it in the calendar, so everybody knows it's on us after that 15 day. All right. Go ahead, hey, Kim, the majority of all calls that you get, do you see them as relation to extra additional items that the new resident wants coming in, or are they just normal maintenance calls? Uh, most of it is. Uh, 
Well, it's an addition to it. I mean, it's the, it's the maintenance calls as well as the renovation calls. Um, so, computer calls, phone calls, everything. Got it's, it's, it's a hanging pictures. So, um, it's all encompassing it's, it's, then. It's yeah, just yeah, everything. everything is Starting the thermostat. Yeah, everything. Mm -hmm. everything. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Because they, they, they know nothing at this point. Okay. Um, and so we really need someone to address them when they come in, especially with the heating, the phones, and the, and the computer. Gotcha. The computers. Um, everything else is pretty simple. Dave, why don't we download and go to Best Buy or wherever we need to go and get a zillion CDs, download the Pepco instructions on CD or DVD, and have that... Uh, in Kim's um, new package, her her, her, her moving package, okay. right? Yeah, because we have it. I mean, they could watch it right on the channel, the YouTube channel. But if they don't, when they come in, you have a CD. It's already in <coughs> package for how to work, how to work the system. So okay. we should just buy it and, and download download CDs. That's fine. Okay, it's not a problem. Gotcha. Now, only one concern that I have about that is. If it's a request from a resident that's moving in, that may be something that they would be charged for. Yes. Is there some way that we can uh, log those in maybe through email instead of a ticket? Because sometimes those items, they may decide not to do it after they get a price. Absolutely. And that's a ticket out there in Cyberland that we don't want to have to open and then close out and just because. I can pretty much determine that. Okay. And I'll tell them, this is going to be a charge. Gotcha. Um, take, for instance, the free picture hanging for one hour. Uh, when you're ready for that, Call me. I'll schedule it for you. However, anything after an hour, you will be charged for. Uh, I stress with the Sarah pendant. I, I stress that every resident needs one. That's one of the things that I discuss. I tell them that's a hundred and thirty-five dollar one-time fee. Um, if, you know, we we ask that you purchase one. You know, uh, we re recommend that you purchase it. And if you do, this is going to be the fee. So they all know the fees and the charges. I pretty much know that. Um, and if I have a question about it, I always give one of you all a call to find out if this is going to be a charge uh, for that so that I can pass it on to the, to the new resident. But um, basically, and that's what I do. Anything that they're going to be charged for, I'll definitely send it out in an email. Um, so we'll, I'll continue to do that. But is that but, in their package already when you give them their moving package? Isn't that written out in their package? Yes, it is. Okay. Yep. Yes, it is. I was saying that. Remember what you were talking about the other day, Ms. Lula? There used to be a form for charges. Okay, we talk about addendum to the contracts whenever they um, order extra items as far as the structure of the overall um, cottages or units, you know, there's addendum should be done so we can see. We that haven't been receiving any now. All we do okay. is receive a request. But uh, and also we should get us I found out recently we gotta get a signature from our resident saying okay. that they approved it. Yes. Well let's yes. let's get into that when we go open up the turnover. Okay. Okay. Um okay, so from this, you'll see that we have every work order completed by every uh, employee on our team, uh, and it matches up with the hours. So, of course, when we look at the report, we want to make sure that there's nothing too out of whack. So, in other words, we don't want to see two work orders for 85 hours. <laughs> so, um, that, that, that's kind of how we look at it. So, um, if there's anything that is really glaring on this report, Dave, by, we obviously come have, they come have that conversation with me. But... At this point, every employee that is logging in, we can track what their work orders are and we know where they completed them and basically the, time, the amount of time it takes to complete them. Uh, obviously, this is a two-pronged approach. We look at it to make sure that the employees are accountable and we also look at it from a resource standpoint because if we look at it and there's somewhere where we're, we're really, excuse me, really falling short, uh, for lack of a better term, then we might have to obviously discuss resources. Um, that comes out a lot when we discuss, obviously, the environmental team. So, um, so. I'm looking at people that I know are the ones that do the apartments and do the housekeeping. Mm -hmm. They get work orders? We count it as a work order. Mm -hmm. You count what as a work order? Cleaning your apartment they is the work order. order. Ah, so. Okay. Yeah, but not only that. They, they also, it lets you know, it keeps a record as well as how often, and so they kind of put some people on a schedule. Yeah. It also helps us to look at time studies. Um, so we, we're trying to make sure that we have a general idea for what it takes to clean an apartment, oh, obviously yeah. versus a cottage, obviously versus... And different size apartments. Size. Exactly. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's why we do it. Yep. And there's no accounting for it. 
position by some residents to put it on the blood. Yeah. 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 Correct. <laughs> that, 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 that would be correct. <laughs> that would be correct. Um, one more thing, Mr. Roy, we did not talk about in the initial um, information. Landscaping. Um, we are in the process at this point, and, and I've been meeting with uh, Ms. Alice, uh, immensely on this, looking at two vendors. We won't go into the, the vendor names, but there's going to be a meeting uh, Thursday, correct? Right? Um, there will be a meeting on Thursday of the grounds committee, but I'm sure Ms. Alice will open it up um, to, to visitors, and we're going to have two companies come in and do a, a presentation. Um, on what they can do as far as master planning for the community and also just the, the maintenance uh, contract. Uh, when I came here, I said we would be very transparent. So we, we're really kind of standing out. We want that to be the resident's choice. So um, they're going to, like I said, they meet Thursday at 3. I think it's in the game room, in the game room. Um, so like I said, so if anybody wants to come, I think that it might be a, a good meeting to come to. You can actually see the plan. Um, actually, I have a copy of uh, one of the presentations on my uh, on my desk. So, if you guys want to look at it, feel free. What about lighting? Lighting too. We are, I'm going to get to that because we had a, a meeting about that. Well, we had an email about that this weekend. Would you mind explaining to me briefly what they're doing in that uh, in the scooter room where they're going upstairs and what what project is that? We we actually have uh, some construction work going on in the attic. And there was very little or no access to the what attic. Uh, it's above the library and down the corridor that goes to the clock tower. What are they doing? Miss, there's, there's no heat up there, so that's when a lot of our pipes are freezing. There's no insulation. Okay, so they're installing, uh, installing heaters, heaters, right? Oh, correct. That was what I wanted to know. And installing and heating. On okay. that note, there's Thank now you. heat in the attic. That's what the guy rooms. told me, but oh, I just wanted great. to check. It was never, there was never heat there. Was there any heat? Great. I think that needs to go out this week too. We need to write yeah. that and make sure that we let everybody know that. That's, brief that's being done by an outside contractor. Yes. Yep. They're very nice people. Good. Glad you like them. All right. Well, that means something we're doing is working. Uh, sorry. I'm sorry. A uh, question about uh, landscaping. Um, do we, are we supposed to, I guess, um, pose our, all of our questions to the landscaping department? Or if they have a question about something in particular that they want to do, can they bring in an outside landscaper? What's the what's the protocol regarding bringing in outside uh, fix-it guys, uh, landscaping, um, painters? You, you know what I'm getting to. I, I would I would prefer not to. I would prefer to be an operational call mm -hmm. um, where if they do. You send us the information if you send within that 15 days. If not, they just know the number to call us and we do it. Because the problem is what we don't want to happen is for somebody to get taken advantage of. Absolutely. Um, financially, mm -hmm. materials-wise, whatever. At least that we know if our, our individuals and the guys that we have here, the people we have here, yes. um, can make sure they want to get the best price, right. make sure that the work is done correctly, mm -hmm. and make sure that if something isn't done correctly, then we can go back after the person. Right. right. Um, the, the issue with that is if a, a a resident does it on their own, we don't really hold a lot of play if something goes wrong. Absolutely, and that's, that, this is one of the things that I stress to them, is that if you bring someone in from the outside, then we're not responsible exactly. uh, for you know any mishaps that, that go along, because most of them come from homes where they have you know handymen, mm -hmm. um, and they want things done you know expeditiously, you mm -hmm. know, and so you know, can I bring my handyman or can I bring my gardener? Uh, mm -hmm. Can they, and so those questions, you know, I, I don't know. I can't answer that. But I always stress to them to come through our departments first, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I'll get the answers that I can get for them because you know, this, my handyman will come here and he'll do this for me. Um, however, we do charge. Is it twenty-five dollars an hour um, for any type of uh, maintenance uh, issues that they have? Mm -hmm. uh, some of them cringe regarding that because they have long-lasting relationships with some of these people. They've been in their houses for 40, 50 years. Mm -hmm. um, however, they are moving into a community, you mm -hmm. know, and we do have rules and protocol um, that we need to... Um, and it's really just liability. And I mean, and to be quite honest yeah. with you, it really boils down to liability. Yeah, um, yeah. We, we kind of have a general idea of who's coming on our campus. Mm -hmm. 
Um, there's protocols for any contractors that come on the campus. So they sure. know what they have to do. They know they have to sign in. They know they have to wear a badge, so on and so on. That's right. If you're bringing somebody in and, and got to, you yeah. don't give them those rules, mm -hmm. and we don't even know they're on the campus and then something happens, well, guess who takes the blame? Yes. And that's not a, a position that I like to be in. You know? yeah. So I think um, that's key, though, Kevin. The security's got to know who's coming and who's going, mm -hmm. who opened their door and who they opened the gate for and who not. You right. Remember in the summer, me and you were on the campus and met several contractors that we didn't even know. Right. They were having garden work done. They were, uh, because some of the residents are actually calling in their own yeah. contractors to do certain things. And uh, yeah. I don't think that's wrong. Yeah, so we'll, we probably yeah. need to, just, it's not as good. Francis, we probably need to get something out about that too. Um, yeah. Ms. Francis, let's, let's, we probably need to put something out about that too. Because we don't want, we, don't, we definitely well, don't want that to That's what we do. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. So again, there's a uh, a presentation of two contractors Thursday at three. Uh, I guess I'm sure Miss Alice will be happy for uh, to have more visitors come Did in and look at game room. Game room. Game room. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. So All right. this week, uh, Kevin, we moved in. I guess Kevin Vernon, forty-one hundred six and forty-one hundred seven. Mm -hmm. Forty-one hundred seven is the correct. Yeah, so I did get an email this morning okay. um, about some things that need to be done. I think the contractor did come over and say, hey, we're going to go over there and, and, and work on it. Yes. Yep. Um, so I think we're okay there. Yes, we are. Um, 250. So anything in yellow? 250 um, was on. Um, new movement. We yeah. thought it was close to being finished, but after looking at it, they want to replace the whole carpet in the living area. So I'm waiting on that. Okay, so let me ask that question. For the carpet, the new carpet is coming in. The new resident doesn't like, or we didn't. Well, um, the situation with this one was there was a cutout in there, six by okay. six. Okay. However, um, I was told on Friday okay. that they would be replacing that carpet in the living room because okay. it does not look right. Okay. So, um, I mean, we were dead on schedule. Okay. And hopefully we still will be. Uh, we've got a couple weeks before the 26th. Other than that, everything else has been done in that unit. We're okay. We had a few more additions, and they've already been taken care of. Um, so the only thing that we're waiting on now um, is the carpet to be replaced, on, only in the living room area. Great. Um, and I don't believe that that's going to be the resident's responsibility. Okay. Um, it's on, yeah, well, yeah, that's the way you're explaining it now, it's on us. I thought maybe the resident walked in no. and said, I don't like it, because no. I know that was an as-is, you no. know, correct? Right. Okay. It was an as-is. All right. Um, uh, this one, I have been totally in the dark uh, through the entire process. So, uh, actually, I posed the question marks to Kevin Kevin Weber. This is his, his um, this is his resident. What, well, I guess what we're concerned about, and I guess uh, I'll kind of speak for Vernon on this one, is I need to know what that true date is. Um, because the problem now is there was permit issues. Mm -hmm. um, we had some really intense meetings with um, the contractors last week yeah. on, on a finished date. But what I don't want to do is push them and, and kind of beat them up, for lack of a better term, on that finished date. And that's not, they're not even close. Because if they're going to be here, <clears throat> from what I, I was hearing, yeah. um, Late March. Okay, and that's that's perfect. Then yeah. I we need to stick with that because Absolutely. there's some issues over there. Okay. So okay. now, in us speaking here, the contractor still is going to think that they need to be out by the 14th of February, okay. which at this point this I know is unrealistic. Right. Okay. Well, so that's, that's what I need to know. So um, yeah. So if it's really March, I'm okay with that. I All can right. live with that. Okay. Um, I would almost prefer that. It was closer to the beginning of March, wasn't it? Kim, I was told. And That's what I was told. Beginning. Of March. And then I yeah. and then I, okay. I I was told February. So I just really wanted to know what the situation was, um, the status of the unit, so I can determine, so we can all determine together. Yeah, what's a good move-in date for this? I thought for this Kevin personally. Okay. Okay. To get a date. He said in early March. So okay. Early so March. Early March. Early March. Okay. Well, if you can let me, if you can let me know today, Kevin. Would, where we're gonna go with that, so we can go okay. Right. Uh, two o four. Two o four. The carpet was installed over the weekend. The appliances will be installed today. We're gonna do a walkthrough tomorrow. Okay. When do? When do those 
those of us residents that walk through, when do you want us to do that? Because I know you would uh, like us to do it first in case we see something that needs to be corrected. Right. Is there, uh, can we all do it together? I mean, is it is it possible for all of us to be in this? Yeah, in, in, I, I in, prefer to do everything I, at one time. I, I, just, I don't just, have a problem with yeah, that. This. But those of us in the community that are going to do it, we need to know far enough in advance. I mean, you just can't say, oh, we're going to do this tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I may have a class, Vic is in the hospital somewhere. And so what I need to know is who are your inspectors as far as the residents are concerned? Mm -hmm. so that I, I know can, who they so are. So I know, I know you're Always one of them. and Vic James and Lou Ann Vick. Okay, and what I can do is I can put them also on our email. Let them, and send you them. I have them sending. You might get a copy of this too. Yes, absolutely, and I sent you one uh, Friday. Yes. Yes. Um, and I can do the same for the rest of the rest okay. of this. And I would like for us to do it collectively. I mean, I don't want yeah, it makes more five sense, different inspections going on. And I can tell you where it's, it's so inefficient the way we've been doing it. Um, yeah. You guys go in, you see one. Mm -hmm. Kim goes in, she sees one. Different eyes. Burn and I see If everybody's there at one time, yes. mm -hmm. all we ask is to take your shoes off so you don't step down on a new carpet. That's all we ask. <laughs> 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 mm -hmm. I, we, we prefer everybody go at one time so everybody can see it. And whatever issues come out of it, we handle it one time. That's because if everybody needs to understand, too, it costs us money. When the contract is finished with their date and say they're finished, everything that we go and ask for extra, is extra money. Yeah. So if we can do that, I would be happy, sad guys. I have something that I would like for the apartment building. Kim, mm -hmm. if you could determine whether or not the incoming resident is very short or is in a wheelchair. And it's all right to have that rod in the coat closet as low as it is in every apartment. Yes. Because if you'll notice, almost every apartment I go in, I will write on there that the rod in the coat closet near the front door is too low. Yes. If the person is very short, or in a wheelchair, that's cool. And I think that's why they are low like that because. But everybody coming in is, is not that short. short. Or in a um, wheelchair. Even some of the taller men have asked that the the rods be lowered because they they're having slump issues. And and Vern and I have been noting that um, to if you, if you reposition know that. the rods, um, and we've been doing that, and it's on my design sheet. Um, do you get a copy of well. the design sheet when you do your walkthrough? No, they don't. No. And a, another question, um, or, or another issue, is that um, we had determined early on that a design sheet would be put in each unit. You know, so you can keep track of what's going on. Not constantly, check on. but they're so, supposed to pull when they're done. It's supposed to be put on the back window or the sliding glass door. Mm -hmm. They shouldn't be there when we're doing our inspection. Because mm -hmm. by that time, it's been cleaned. Right. Right, exactly. We're doing the process, the renovation process. It okay. should be there. Yeah, yeah I agree. agree. So there's no question. And if I have a change or an addendum. Okay. That you know, should be there as well. That should I be agree. there as well. Yeah. Look, we don't, during construction, we don't care if the, the back, the patio glass looks like a poster board. Right. Mm -hmm. I would almost right. prefer that it looks like yeah. a poster board because that way I know every change was there and we're communicating. Mm -hmm. um, we kind of annoys me is we'll go in there and we only see one or we see none, right. which obviously is, is problematic. Each contractor needs to put that up there. Well, you ask them where the design sheet is and they'll say it was with some Or the initials, right. maybe maybe we change the process, kind of like we looked at with uh, Kim earlier about the 15 days. When we first do the project, maybe we go in there and put it up post and post it. So that way we know we did it. You know, I can say that we did. Mm -hmm. And if it's not there when we go back in, we know they moved. Well, that can be done, Kim. That's good. All right. Okay. All right. So I think we'll we'll change and, and kind of do that. And I only have the ones that I um uh, the one the move is for February um, in yellow. But we've got March. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have seven move-ins coming up in the month of March. Two uh, fifty-four. Are they coming in? In March, or is, has it been decided yet? Uh, I moved them down to the to be determined 254 because I have no idea. Last, so, the so the unit is complete. Yeah. The unit is complete, mm -hmm. but the last mm -hmm. time I heard, there was still some <coughs> negotiating to be done. Uh, yeah. 
Okay. Absolutely. Well, same okay. thing with 115, 116 I heard this morning. Mm -hmm. And the same with Dr. Oh, Fee. I'm sorry. We'll point. I'll call her. Yeah, 5111. So those, um, I'm still, I still don't have any uh, information on. Well, these are done, so I don't feel bad about that. Yeah, they're because all they're done. done. They're done. Besides 5115. Have you yeah. had the walkers? Not for... When we say done, we mean construction-wise. Oh, okay. Not yeah. So, but you, you right. and I don't have a, and I have a TBD there for the walkthrough because you know, that's what I saw. But fifty-one eleven was walked through by the by the residents. Okay. What so was that? That's the, that's the, the one of the pocket and all. Oh, that's the cottage. I don't do cottages. Okay. 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 And I'll get an update on that one. But we have so many coming in. On well, we have quite a few. Three, four that are coming in on the 1st of March, so I so, want to kind of tie them in with February. So why don't we do that, right? I mean, you just said something very interesting. So what? we're splitting up? No, different people, different, different people resident. are different, different residents. residents. Okay. Because yeah. I know what doesn't work or needs attention in the apartments. Okay. And I, I wouldn't know Jack Sugar about the villas. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, All right, so we have 167. 167 should be easy because that was already done. done. So that was, okay. Yeah. Yeah, now good. I do have the resident will pay to replace carpet with hardwood. And that brings me to my next yes. subject. Mm -hmm. We are not doing anything that I don't have your signature on. <laughs> oh, so. definitely so, understand that. And I will get those signatures right, for you. So I'm still waiting on those. When they say time. that they agree to pay, yes. we want your signatures or Kevin's or whoever. So because okay. the issue comes with emails that came the other day. Mm -hmm. Where either I'm not happy with the work or mm -hmm. I forget that I asked for the work mm -hmm. and get paid now. Mm -hmm. So I think, in a reality, I think it should have your signature plus their signature yes. and then we'll do it. I totally agree. Okay. okay. So but if we can't send it upstairs to process it until their signature is on it, so their signature has got to be And on I stress that to my new residents, you know, if you want it, if you have a change, it may affect your move-in date, uh, your completion date. You know, I need those signatures. And but that goes back to that form that Ms. Mm -hmm. Lewis talked That's about. Prior to our share. arrival, Kev, there was a form that was being filled out and it's not being done. Well, I mean, we can recreate and, the and form if we need to. I don't have any issue with that. Yeah. So, uh, I think that's just an issue of sending with Kevin. Yeah. Well, make our own. It was established in marketing, right, Ms. Lewis? I think it was. It was established in marketing. Then it came from um, the accounting department. All right, well, I don't want to kind of cry, but if okay. we need to just make a simple form, I can sit here and make it while we're talking, but let's just have one form that we all agree on that the residents sign for any particular work that they want done mm -hmm. and they, they are responsible for. It's like a contract, more or less. Okay. All right, so, Vernon, you don't feel in any ways we're, we're going to have any issues with the five move-ins for March, correct? None at all. The only thing we need to really discuss is um, 21, 15, 16, 16 and sure, we really, really need to know what that moving, that real move-in date is. Okay. And the farther that you can push it out, the better. Yeah. A oh, quick question for yeah. you all, since we're all in the room together. Um, the Slossons, 4217. Um, they emailed me quite a few times regarding the skylights, and I have it over here in the comments section. Is skylight glass UVB, UVA protected? Can I just get a quick, <laughs> uh, and, and can it be? We'll, we'll, get, we'll definitely get back to you. Thank you so much. We'll, I we'll appreciate it. We'll, we'll definitely get back to you on that. Yeah. No, yeah. No, no problem at all. Okay. Um, so, again, we need to also discuss, and Ken, this might be a a bigger conversation. There was something that happened Friday that um, we need to talk about. Architect goes to visit with whoever they go with in marketing. Whatever their issues is, that they need to stay between the architect and operations. There was something that happened Friday that, that shouldn't have happened. And we'll, we'll discuss more about okay. that later. Okay. But um, I would almost prefer that if the architect goes to a site that he goes with Vernon. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, and, and I will give him a call today to, to notify him of okay. that. 